Narayan, Sri Guru Pyo Namaha. We start with name number 369, Damodar. This is an intimately familiar name to all of us coming out of the Krishna Leela in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavat. So the word Dham, as we all know, refers to a rope, but it also refers to worlds or happiness. The word Udar means belly. Now based upon the different interpretations and combinations, there are different uh, commentaries. So when it means worlds, Bhagwan Bhashakar has given the interpretation of one who has all the worlds in his belly is Damodar. Dhamani loka namani tani asya udre antare tene damodara deva shridhara shri samashritaha. So, Damodar. Now, Damana udare baddha eti damodar, which also means one who was tied around his waist with a cord. This is an interpretation that is supported by the verse from the Brahma Puran, Tayor Madhya Gatam, etc., etc. Uh, for those of you who are interested, it's Brahma Puran 184, 41, 42. So he became famous by the name Damodar because he was tied by a rope around his belly by his mother Yashoda. The love of the beloved Lord with his devotees is reciprocal. And it goes both ways, unlike the so-called love of the material world, which is temporary and reciprocated, hardly reciprocated. And since the devotee is held captive by the love of the Lord, so the Lord is also held captive by his devotee. As in the Bhagavad Gita, ye yatha maam prapadyante tam pajamiyam, which is 4.11, in whatever way people surrender unto me, I reciprocate accordingly. So, Damodar has yet another meaning and it means one who is known through the mind which is purified, which is Udar or Utkrisht, a purified mind by means of self-control or Dham. We have spoken about Dham a couple of days ago and other qualities. So devotees that train their mind, that lead them to the supreme realization is the one who is worshipping Damodar because the one who is reached by practicing Dham is called Damodar. He also gives support from the, uh, from the Mahabharat uh, which says Damat Damodara Vibhuhu which is, he's called Damodar by the virtue of Dham, Dham, which is in the Udyog Parv 569.8. Hence, Govind Damodara Madhaveti, as also in the Kunta Stuti, 1831 of the Srimad Bhagavat, where Kunta says, My dear Krishna, Yashoda took up a rope to bind you when you committed an offense and your perturbed eyes overflowed with tears, which washed away the mascara from your eyes. Similarly, in the Ramcharit Manas, when Lord Ram is to liberate Ravan, he talks about how due to the fact that Ravan is focused on Sita and Sita Ma and who in turn is always focused on me, Sri Ram, who in turn has universes, all the universes in his belly and hence the killing of Ram would result in the end of the world. Here, the word Damodar is personified again. So that's Damodar, name number 368, Saha, all enduring, the Lord who is the one who has great patience, he tolerates, he's, he has a lot of forbearance and he forgives readily the faults of all his sincere devotees. So, all enduring as he also supersedes all. Saha meaning he who has patience Sahati Sarvam Iti, he bears everything. So Vishnu is Sahishnu, meaning he bears. Now Lord Sri Shankaracharya interprets this Naam in two ways, as Sarvam Abhibhavati Shamate Iti Va Saha, meaning the first meaning is that he can withstand and repulse any attack on him. 
Here, the word sah is withstand. The second meaning is that he can forgive and forget any amount of offenses. So if the offender repeats and seeks for forgiveness, he forgives. Hence, the word sah also means forgive. So he has tolerated all our offenses. He has tolerated Dragu's assault, Vishoda's captivity, Shishupal's abuses, all of that only on the account of welfare of his devotees. Hence, we also say, Saho me, me the which is, give me the attribute or the ability to forgive and forget like Lord Sri Hari does. Hence, you will notice that Vishnu Patni, Dharani Devi, is also worshipped for this attribute of tolerating and bearing our burdens and weight. Saha also means strength and valor. Saha meaning powerful or mighty. So he who tolerates the transgresses of his devotees but is also powerful enough to curb evil tendencies through the right measures is called Saha. Name number 369, Mahidhara. This means the supporter or the bearer of the earth. This is intuitive. Since he is the very essence in the universe as its material and efficient cause, he is the one who supports all the universes and the forms in the universes. He is the substratum of the universe, hence Mahi meaning earth, Dhara meaning bearing. And so he supported the earth during between his tusks in the Varaha Avatar. So Mahidhara, this is simple to understand. Also means Adishesh, since in the imagery, Adishesh bears the earth and various many, very, very many earths and universes like that on his hood. Now, following the cause-effect principle, the Karya Karan that we have spoken about in terms of the, the order of the names, this one follows from the last one's interpretation. This name has also occurred earlier as 319. The meanings given earlier were that he supports the earth by ridding it of evil. And this is how he tolerates it or not. Mahi also means the Vedas or the divine word and hence the one who supports the Vedas is our Lord Sri Hari, hence Mahidhara. The next one, 370 is Mahabhaga, meaning he who has extreme beauty in all his lim limbs or the one who is ever fortunate or the one who always gets the biggest and the greatest share, bhag, in every yagya, hence according to Bhagwan Bhashakar. Taking various avatars of his own free will, he enjoys many offerings rendered to him by virtue of the roles that he plays in those avatars. For example, the sacrificial offering during the Rajasoya Yagya. His second interpretation also is that he is Mahabhaga, which means he gets the best of everything during his incarnations. Hence, Mahabhaga. So either significant or the best is Mahabhaga. Now, name number two, 371, Vegavan, one who is swift, again, easy to understand, but one who is swift in doing what? In reaching his devotees, the minute the devotee's loving heart remember, remembers Sri Hari. By import, it also generally means that he's all-pervading and therefore he is the fastest in as much that nothing can ever overtake him. So, Vegavan, one who is of tremendous speed, like Hanuman Bhagwan, we say Manojavam Maruta Tulya. So Tulya, but Atulya, as we have seen earlier, even faster than the fastest, faster than the wind. In the Isa Vasya, Vasya Upanishad, he is indicated as swifter than the mind. It is said in uh, Isha Vasya Upanishad, Shlok 4, it is motionless, but it is faster than the mind and all the senses could not over, overtake it. Sitting, it goes faster than those who run after it. By it, the all-pervading air supports the activity of the living beings. And then goes on to say it moves, but it's motionless, it's distant, but it's near, it's within all, but it's without all. This is the Viruddha Dharm that we have spoken about before, all a matter of paradoxes and contradictions. Now, Vague means speed and Vegavan means someone who acts with speed in any situation. 
So he displays speed in all in actions, all his actions, and so there is no delay at all in Srihari reaching to take away the distress of Gajendra or Draupadi. And he manifests at will to serve the cause of his devotees. So that's Vegavan. Name number 372, Amit Shanaha. Now, Amit Sanaha, meaning the voracious eater or the one with endless appetite. Now, this is referring to the Govardhan Leela, where the offerings by the gopis um, to Govardhan Giri, instead of offering to Indra, at the insistence of Krishna, is referred to. Now, Lord Krishna appears at the top of the Govardhan mountain, and he accepts all the offerings. And so, Bhagavan Bhashakar says, the one who eats huge quantities of food, and therefore displays his greatness among the other acts by swallowing the food like we all know the chapan bhog that is offered to Shri Hari making the cowards exclaim in wonder Devo va danavo va tvam who are you? Are you a Deva or a Asur? which is written in Vishnu Purana also 5.13.121 so Amita means enormous or unlimited and Ashan means food and therefore Amitashana literally means someone who consumes an enormous amount of food Bhagavan Bhashakar also interprets this in another manner whereby he says Samhare Samaye Vishwam Ashnati Iti Amita Shanaha which is at the time of dissolution he consumes all the universe and therefore Amita Shana. not taken literally of course it just means that the entire infinite cosmos goes into prale in the Bhagavad Gita 11.28 Yathanadi Nam Bhavo Vega, where as many waves of the rivers flow into the oceans so do all these great warriors enter blazing into your mouths we have talked we have seen this in the Bhagavad Gita where everything is flowing into the mouth of Sri Krishna and Arjun is just but the medium for killing all the warriors. The next stanza, stanza 41, Udbhava Shobhano Deva Shri Garbha Parameshwara Karanam Karanam Karta Vikarta Gahano Guha Udbhava, Udbhava means the originator, the source, the fountainhead. Udbhava the source of the origin, the Lord, is the material cause from which the entire universe arises and therefore he is the origin for the entire cosmos. Udbhava also means one who removes bond bondage. Now, Bhagavan Bhashakar has again interpreted this in two ways. The first is where he says that he is the Upadan Karan of the Prapanch. So, the basic or the primary cause of the creation of the universe, hence he is called Udbhava. The second interpretation is Udgato Bhavat Samsarat Itiva, which is he is above and beyond the shackles of samsara, of earthly existence, and therefore he is Udbhava, the elevated one. This is to mean one who removes the bondage of samsara of those who meditate upon him. Now, in being the fountainhead, it also means that he creates an upsurge, therefore Ud, Up, Bhava, the world, so the upsurge of different creations comes from him, as in the Chatushloki, where he says, I, the personality of the Godhead, or Brahma, or Sri Hari, was existing before creation, and there was nothing but myself, and there was no material nature, the cause of this creation, and that which you also see now is I, and that will remain after annihilation will also be I, Lord Shri Hari. Hence, in the Purush Sukta, it says, He envelopes the world from all sides. He pervades each part of the creation, Puraka Eves Dam Sarvam, and He is this and beyond, and extends beyond in the ten directions represented by the ten fingers. We also see this in Vishnu Shastranam itself, where it says, Lokanathan Mahadbhutam Sarvabhuta Bhavod Bhavam. So, Udbhava. The next name is Shobhana the agitator, the creator of commotion, the dynamic principle of the universe, Shobhana. The interpretation for this is derived from the root Shobh, Shubh, which means to agitate or to disturb violently. Sri Adishankaracharya explains this as, at the time of creation, he entered Prakriti and Purush and he agitated or stirred them together in order to bring about the universe into being now, we have talked about this even earlier. So, the one who creates tumult in the minds of those who are seen to be enslaved in the samsara is also Shobhan. 
the Vishnu Puran 1 229 describes this process as Bhagavan entering Prakriti and the Purush at the time of creation and he forcefully mixes them together of his own will. So he is Shobhan because he keeps the beings in universe vib vibrant by being their Antaryami and keeping them constantly in motion. The dynamic aspect of the world is seen in everything since if the self is not there, there is no moment. There would, it, everything would be inert and insentient. So he palpates everything with life. He is the pulsating force of the universe and therefore Shobhana. Similar to the agitation of the oceans to bring forth nectar in the Samudra Manthan or in the Arani Manthan to invoke Agni or fire. This is a fire friction method which again refers to Shobhan or agitation. Hence Shobhan. 375, Deva. Now this is again very simple to understand. But the one who revels or sports with himself, with his creation is Deva. Bhagavan Bhashikar again gives this explanation where he says, the play of creation, the desire to conquer the enemies, functioning and shining in all beings, being praised by holy men, pervading and ever-present, are the reasons for him being called the Deva. He is constantly enacting his leelas, ever-dazzling with his personality, goes everywhere and anywhere at will and is worshipped by all his devotees. The Upanishad says, Eko Deva Sarva Bhuteshu Gudaha 611. There is only one God who is hidden deep inside all the things that exist. Divyati Kridati Iti Devaha, the one who plays with the jivas, his divine play by binding them with Maya or Prakriti, is Deva. Deva also means the one who shines or conquers or praises. So, Deva. Now, the next name, Sri Garbaha. Again, uh, a few interpretations. The simple one is he contains all the glories within his womb. So, un, one in whom all glories are contained or all Aishwarya or Shri is contained is Shri Garbha. The glory of the Lord is the universe and this universe resides in him and therefore all the powers and glories that are manifested in the universe are also ever present in him. Shri also means Goddess Lakshmi which indicates wealth, beauty, magnificence. Garbha means the womb or the source or the place where such Sri is created. And combining these two, Bhagwan Bhashakar interprets this name as Sri Vibhuti Yasya Udarantare Jagadrupaha Yasya Garbhe Sthita Sa Sri Garbha. He is the source of all magnificence that we see in the universe. Hence, he is Sri Garbha. So he is inseparable from Shri or Lakshmi in his sports and she, she is also ever inseparable from Vishnu as per the Vishnu Puran 1.9.144. Also, the universe exists within the care and protection of Shri Hari, just like the child within the mother's womb, hence Shri Garbha. And finally, since Shri is only born to serve Shri Hari, Therefore, he has Shri in his Garbha or womb, hence also Shri Garbha. The next name, Parameshwara. This is again extremely easy to understand. The Supreme Param, Lord Ishwar. The term Ishwar indicates might and glory and therefore Parameshwar is the one who is all glorious, omnipotent, omniscient, everything. The Supreme Ruler. Now, he acts as the prime leader in all incarnations and Bhagavan Bhashikar again defines this as the supreme leader and the ruler, hence Parmeshwar. Aishwarya means lordship and Bhagavan is Parmeshwar because he is the lord of all, indicating Mahalakshmi. There is also another uh, meaning that is derived from Parama, which is Parama Mahalakshmi, which is above all Shaktis and therefore the Param, which is Sri Lakshmi, seeks the place in his Vakshasthal or chest and therefore he is Paramayaha Ishwaraha Parameshwaraha. Bhagavan Bhashikar also indicates that just as a human being, when in full control of his senses, as, we, as indicated by Sham, does well in ruling over himself, Bhagavan Srihari, who is always in full control of the beings, is also Parameshwar or the ruler of the universe. There are many other meanings, but let's move on. The next four names, 
Karanam, Karanam, Karta, Vikarta. These four names belong to one logical group. They also belong to a Triputi. All four of them cover th different aspects of karma or action and how Sri Hari controls all different aspects of every single action. It has three prime components, the doer, the cause, and the instrument, which is who does the action, why, and how, and Sri Hari relates to all three of them. Karanam, the instrument. That which is most useful in fulfilling any piece of work is called the tool or the instrument. And so for the creation, he is the instrumental cause, Nimitta Karan. He is the means of creation. And Bhagavan Bhashikar interprets Karanam as he is the prime instrument in the creation of the world. The derivation Kriyate Anena Iti Karanam, by which or through someone whose uh, the act is done. So Bhagavan is the only means for doing this act of creation. And all our senses are also the means of knowledge that are bestowed by Sri Hari. So Karanam is the cause that makes the beings act using the currents, the senses or the tools. Karanam is also the means of the sadhana, so the principal instrument for doing something. And he who is the issue or the lord of the indriyas, as we talked about the grana indriyas and the karma indriyas, and beyond these indriyas also the antakaran chatushthe, which is the mind, the intelligence, the intellect, the ahankar, the ego, which are all also controlled by Sri Hari. Hence karanam, karanam. And this distinguishes karanam from the next nam, karanam, by interpreting karanam as the primary cause and karanam as the supplementary cause. And Bhagavan is both the primary and the supplementary cause, the nimitta upadan karan. We have seen this earlier in the act of creation. Hence karanam, karanam. Now, Karanam, therefore, upadan nimittam cha karanam. We talked about this. So, he is the only means, means of attaining him. And therefore, everything that he gives are the tools for attaining him. Hence, karanam. At this point, we will conclude and we will pick this up tomorrow again with the rest of the translation. Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Narayan Jai Shri Krishna.